Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday update. And uh, wow, it is just about Christmas. Uh, if you don't have your shopping done yet, uh, you really are running out of time. But uh, I thought I'd start with a photo of the day, and this comes from a couple nights ago. Uh, there were a group of us that went out and sang Christmas carols in the pedestrian tunnel uh, out near the casino. There's a tunnel that goes under the highway out there. Uh, one of our life groups got this little tradition started a few years ago. And uh, it's really fun. It's this long, um, all tiled in tunnel. The acoustics are great. Uh, a group of us went out there, sang carols, and we even had a couple of people who were just passing through on their way from Oregon back to Port Angeles that had stopped to look at all the lights, walked in the tunnel, heard us singing, and joined in. And uh, we had a great time out there. So I hope you're finding some ways, uh, some special ways to celebrate this Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, don't forget, this Sunday is Christmas Eve, and because of that, we're doing things a little bit different with our Sunday services. Instead of having two morning services, we're going to have one service in the morning at 10 a.m., and another service, just like it, that evening at 5 p.m. Both of these will be our traditional candlelight Christmas Eve service, but you have your choice between 10 o'clock in the morning or 5 p.m. in the evening. And so choose what you'd like to do, and I hope we'll see you on Sunday to celebrate Christmas Eve. Speaking of Christmas, uh, this Sunday is also the last Sunday if you want to donate to the Advent Conspiracy Project. Uh, Advent Conspiracy is something that we have done for a number of years. Uh, the idea is to change the equation of Christmas from a season when we spend lots of money just trying to get things for ourselves, maybe things we don't need, and we take some of that money and we give to those who are in need. And so we support several projects each year, uh, both internationally and locally. Internationally, we give money to Living Water International. And as you know, Living Water provides clean drinking water in underserved communities and also brings the message of the gospel there. So we'll be giving some of the money to LWI. And then locally, we'll be giving support to Obria, which is a pregnancy resource center. We'll be giving it to Volunteer Hospice of Clallam County and we'll also be providing scholarships for Young Life so that uh, high school aged kids will have a chance to go to camp and hear about Jesus. So if you'd like to give to this project, Advent Conspiracy, uh, if you're giving by check, be sure you note on the memo line that it's for Advent Conspiracy. Or if you're gonna give online, you can go to dcchurch.org, go to the donate button there, uh, go to that page, and there's a drop down menu that you can de designate your gift for Advent Conspiracy. But uh, this Sunday is the deadline for that. And a reminder, our church office will be closed on Christmas Day and the day after. So December 25th and 26th, the church office will be closed. Now, coming up the following weekend, which will be New Year's Eve, uh, that is going to also be a communion Sunday. And something we have started doing is we've been offering in-home communion for people who aren't able to be here in person. So if you or someone you know is shut in, can't come to an in-person service, but they'd like to participate in communion, please call the church office and then uh, one of our elders or pastors will get in touch with them and we'll arrange to serve communion in their home. Uh, speaking of Christmas Eve coming up, that is going to be December 31st. And on that Sunday, we will be back to our regular Sunday morning schedule. So again, it will be services at 9 and 10.45 in the morning on New Year's Eve Sunday. And it's going to be a special Sunday. A few months ago, we took this Growing Young survey. And it was a way of uh, kind of checking, taking our temperature, if you will. And how are we doing in terms of passing our faith on to the next generation? And some of you have wondered, what did we learn from that survey? So Pastor Josh and I, on that Sunday, are going to take the message time to share what we learned and some ideas for how we want to move forward in the future. So that'll be on New Year's Eve Sunday, and that, of course, will also be a Communion Sunday. Uh, then, again, January 1st, New Year's, that Monday, the church office will be closed then as well, but should be open the rest of the week. Okay, and then, we're into the new year already. And January 6th, our men's ministry will have one of their big breakfasts happening on Saturday morning, January 6th. That starts at 8.30 in the morning in the chapel. So men, take note of that. And if you can, go online and register for that. That helps us know how much food to prepare. 
So all you have to do is go to dcchurch.org, go to the events page, look for the men's big breakfast, and there is a registration link you can click right there to do that. And then the following Sunday, will January 7th, is going to be our Grace Stories Sunday, a tradition we've had for a number of years now, uh, the first Sunday in the new year. And uh, I'll be interviewing someone out of our own church, a uh, bit of a surprise guest, uh, hearing about their life story. And I, you're not going to want to miss it. It's, it's a great one. So that's coming up on January 7th. Again, we're back to our regular schedule, services at 9 a.m. and 1045. All of our children's ministries happening at the 9 a.m. hour. All right, how about a thought for the day? And this comes out of John chapter 16. It's part of uh, Jesus' prayer for his disciples. And, and Jesus said this, talking to his disciples, he said, In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Uh, maybe this seems like an odd verse to share uh, on our last update before Christmas to talk about tribulation. But the fact is that when Jesus came into this world, he came because this was a world that was and is deeply broken. Uh, sin, pain, suffering. And Jesus even said to his own disciples, he said, if you follow me, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. In this world, there will be tribulation. And as I think about Christmas, uh, we were talking about this in our staff meeting as well. For a number of people, um, I know this is a hard season. Uh, you perhaps have lost a loved one in this past year, or maybe it's been a difficult season in business. Uh, finances have been down. Maybe there's been family disharmony. And when we come to these special holidays like Christmas, it, it just makes that pain, that sense of loss, feel that much more acute. Uh, everyone else is celebrating, and yet for you inside, uh, there's just tears. And I know I've had some Christmases like that. And, and Jesus didn't tell us that it wasn't, we weren't going to go through pain. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But here's the thing about Christmas. Christmas isn't just about nostalgia and pretty decorations and memories of the past. Uh, Christmas is the celebration that Christ has come to rescue. That he is the one who has overcome the world. The pain, the loss, the suffering. Christmas is a celebration of hope that the pain of the past does not dictate the future that Christ has prepared for us. And so if this is a difficult Christmas for you, um, I, I'm not going to say that it's not going to be hard. It, it may well be. But I hope that in this season, you'll also be able to quiet your heart, maybe spend some time in prayer, and ask God to work this truth deep into your heart that he has overcome the world. Because of Jesus, because Jesus came, there is hope for the future. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, you know each of our situations. And for many of us, this is a, a fun and a joyous and a happy season of year. Uh, Lord, you know, people listening to this program right now, that this has been a difficult year. And I ask, Lord, that you would... In these next few days, give them those moments of peace and quiet. Lord, I pray that your spirit would, would speak comfort to them, that we would all be reminded of the great hope and promise, the great future that we have because Jesus has come. Thank you for the deep promise that Christmas holds for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I uh, trust that you do have uh, a blessed time getting ready for Christmas. I hope that we'll see you Sunday for one of our Christmas Eve services. And until then, be blessed.